Our celebration of the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. begins now. Please welcome to the stage, Troy School District Superintendent, Dr. Rich Macheski, and Troy City Manager, Mark Miller. Morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our fourth annual Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. It takes so many people to, to put this event on. Uh, we're gonna sh thank many of them towards the end of this program, but uh, we wanna start first and foremost by thanking you all for uh, on such a cold day coming out and, and celebrating this very important event with us. Like I said, this is our fourth annual Martin Luther King Day, uh, day of Service celebration. Uh, thank you, Thomas. I am Rich Pacheski, Superintendent of the Troy School District. Uh, we are here today to honor Dr. King, a visionary and great man and also to come together to serve others in his name. Good morning. I'm Mark Miller, the city manager for the city of Troy. We are so pleased to see so many of you here today. It's a true testament to the heart and soul of our community. We also want to take a moment to recognize our elected officials who took the time out of their busy schedules to join us today. First, please welcome uh, U.S. Representative Haley Stevens. I know Haley's going to, uh, Representative Stevenson's going to be here. Stevens is going to be here. I'm not sure she's here yet, but uh, we'll certainly see her, I'm sure, uh, as, we, as we celebrate uh, the uh, uh, service events later this afternoon or later this morning. Uh, with us also, State Representative Padma Koopa. And I know we're expecting State Senator Mallory McMorrow as well. We thank all of them for taking time out of their schedule today. Join us from the city of Troy, our Mayor Ethan Baker, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem David Hamilton, and Council Members Ann Erickson Galt, and um, Council Member Teresa Brooks was supposed to be here, but I'm not sure. Oh, there she is. Coming here. And here from the Troy Board of Education to lend a hand. Our, our uh, board president, Carl Schmidt. <laughs> board secretary, Gary Hoff. And trustee, Dr. Nicole Wilson. We thank them all for being here today. As a prominent leader in the civil rights movement, Dr. Martin Luther King had a huge impact on American history. His use of nonviolent protests led to the passage of the Civil Rights Act the Voting Rights Act, and the Fair Housing Act. His activism changed our world in many ways, but there is still much more work to be done. As we begin this morning, please welcome members of Athens Black Student Association who will take us through dreams realized and promises yet to come in their own words. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I am happy to join in with you today to remember what has gone down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. I had a dream. I had a dream. Millions of slaves seared by the withering flames of justice were freed. I had a dream. I had a dream. A glorious daybreak came to end the long nights of captivity. I had a dream. I had a dream. A hundred years after the Emancipation Proclamation, our brothers and sisters are still not free. I had a dream. I had a dream. Even then, we were still torn by the shackles of segregation and torn by discrimination. I, I had, had a dream. dream. Yet we still lived in an isle of poverty in the middle of a deep ocean filled with material prosperity. I, I had, had a dream. dream. I had a dream that the black community was forced into corners of society and felt exiled on their own land. I, I had, had a dream. dream.
August 12, 1776, the Declaration of Independence. September 17, 1787, the Constitution. Both signed as a promissory note to which all Americans were to fall heir. A promise that all men will be guaranteed the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But hark unto my words, America. The land of the brave has undeniably defaulted onto this promissory note as far as her melanated citizens are concerned. So today we demand the riches of freedom and social justice for our fathers and mothers. Because after all, we are one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We shall rise our heads from the dark and desolate valley of segregation and despair. We shall lift our people from the quicksand of racial injustice and place them on the solid foundation of brotherhood. I have a dream. One day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at a table of sister and brotherhood in the dear words of Martin Luther King Jr. But me, I have a dream that I will be successful and I will walk boldly in life. I have a dream that I will teach future generations the importance of fighting for equality. I have a dream that I will be a leader for change. I have a dream that this nation will rise and live out its true meaning. I have a dream that I will live in a nation that doesn't hate me for my skin. I have a dream that there will be peace and prosperity for all people on earth. I have a dream that all of our dreams will be manifested. August 13th, 1963 was not the end, but the beginning of a revolution, which enabled us to stand here before you today. Wow, that was powerful. Dr. King's tireless efforts change opportunities for people of color in this country, and his legacy means that today we celebrate black authors, black scientists, black CEOs, and a black president. Dr. King's dream for his own children is being realized by children in our schools every day. As we celebrate his life this morning, we thought it fitting to showcase some amazing Troy students with their incredible talents, achievements, and dreams of their own. I am KJ Potts, and I'm walking Dr. Luther King's dream.
and phonics and science. I do a ballet. I do ballet, jazz, and hip hop. I do like different sports, like play basketball and flag football. I like to like do our special because we do like floor hockey and gym. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor. A doctor helps people when they're sick. I can like go to a school that can teach me about doctors, and then I can go to there because then you help people when they're sick. My name is Sydney Coy, and I walk in Dr. King's dream. When my dad writes songs, he usually goes to California a lot and records the song with his friend. And I went there for my first time, and I recorded it, and then it was fun to listen to it, and I had like big headphones on, and I got to speak in a microphone. So the kid, I'm dumb when I'm writing. I like candy, sushi, and ice cream. My team nicely riding on a bike. We would be up there forever when a kicky girl's sight. Nice on my feet from a rubber. That's my daddy, so I'm sassy. I'm happy, and I'm even sometimes ready. Or more crazy, you're lazy and beautiful like four Daisy Sadie. That's my favorite. And my favorite color, navy, maybe. I need to be on TV or a movie screen. Breath, that's my dream. My room is always clean. I balance on a bean. I don't like eating beans because I'm dead like I'm clean. I used to be really scared to um, like share my music. And I feel like it's the same as art, but it's like art with your words. And like ex it's like explaining stuff and rhyming and doing whatever. A makeup artist that raps and uh, DJs. For makeup, I like to do different styles because I used to just do regular like fire looks, but now I do different like looks because it felt like it would be it would be it would become boring if I just did the same thing. It's like a spray paint look where like. It looks like you spray painted it, but it's just white paint, and then you leave a little slit with regular makeup, and it looks really cool. I feel like I just did like a huge masterpiece on my face. <clears throat> My name is Aaliyah Potts and I walk in Dr. King's dream. We shouldn't judge by the color of our skin because it doesn't prove anything and just the content of our characters. I think that's just um, very true because it, like, the color of your skin doesn't really matter it just shows like who you are on the outside. It matters who you are on the inside. I like entertaining people. I think that, you know, it just makes them happy. I know that sometimes people are having a hard time doing things. So um, when they need help, I just like helping them because um, I don't know, I just kind of feel what they're feeling. I like to sing and dance. And I also like performing a lot because I go to this um, summer camp. We do a performance and sometimes I get solos and there's dancing included and there's acting and stuff and I just really like doing that. There was this really fun performance that I also did at WAS. It was like an after school club. It was called Drama Kids and I did that. And it was just really fun because we got to play fairy tale characters. And I just thought it was really fun because like some of my friends were there, and we just had a really fun time like learning songs and stuff. I just like trying new things because sometimes you don't really get to get the chance and you never know if you like it or not, so you may as well try it.
My name is Sanaa Coit, and I walk in Dr. King's dream. Skin tone shouldn't matter about, like, if you want to hang out with that person or not, because it's really what's on the inside that counts. I like doing art because it gives me creativity, and I like to put that creativity in like art, an art form. I start off with a sketch, and I sketch like tiny different like like different sketches to know which one that like looks best to me, and then I like do like the actual line art, and then I color it and shade at the end. I want to be something in the art, like, art industry, because I feel very, I feel very uh, creative when it comes to art. I'd say that I'm a pretty introverted person, and, like, I don't express myself through, my, like, through my own words, so I like to put that down, like, on a canvas so other people can see my personality through my art. I think that it's important to help others because there's a certain hierarchy in the, in the society and like I'm very grateful to have like everything but some people don't have that so I think it's important to help other people. I represent Trinity Adams, and we walk in Dr. King's dream. I have been wanting to be a doctor my entire life, and recently I've been trying to specify what I want to be as a doctor, because there's so many different careers. And so basically, I've brought, narrowed it down to a surgeon, and what I want to be is a cardiothoracic surgeon, which is a heart surgeon. Last year, my eighth grade science teacher really helped me figure out more of what I've wanted to do because I love science and the whole science field, and science has always came more easier to me. So then I've also taken college classes over like the summers and more of like anatomy classes and it's, so, it's easier to understand, and then with the medical books, you just learn a lot more and comprehend a lot more once you have all of the resources in front of you, so it's easier when you get to the actual college. And a lot of my family has cancers and diabetes and just different types of diseases, which has killed my family, and we've gotten help and chemo and tried getting over it. Me and my mom do marathons, and we walk, and help for breast cancer. We do it every year, and my grandma, my mom, my aunts, they all worked at the hospital at one point, but then had to stop and go to a different career and different path. And I just kind of want to continue that line of going and being, becoming a doctor and figuring it out. I have been doing cheer and gymnastics for over 10 years now, so I've been doing it since I was four, and it's, a big part of my life exercise and eating right and keeping healthy. Make sure your body is fit and able to hold up. Yes, sometimes you do break your bones and I've had a lot of injuries, but I've always came back stronger and better. Martin Luther King has helped me be able to go to school with my peers and help figure out how to say what I want to say in life and not be judged for it. and. There was a lot of racism, but he stopped a lot of it, and that helped because now we can go to school with um, white kids and we can be able to be in the same atmosphere as them and not be judged for it or have to go on one side of the school and drink from a different fountain and how he led the walk and the big speech that impacted everybody and changed everything. Anything you put your mind to, you can do. And so, the whole thing with me being wanting to be a doctor is I've put my mind to it and I've wanted and I've tried and I've pushed and gotten all these medical books and I started reading them and so when I'm in an intern I'm not behind and I'm ahead of everybody trying to lead them and not be a follower.
I'm Kennedy Singleton, and I walk in Dr. King's dream. I really am interested in marketing. That is what I think I want to be my career for right now. I just think the creativity of it all and being able to come up with new ideas and advertise to different people is uh, really interesting to me. And I also really like working with children. Uh, I actually did a research project for my AP research class about the way that cartoons affect children, which also kind of ties into the whole marketing aspect of things. I wanted to look into to see if positive cartoons really had an effect on kids socially, if it made kids more um, open to sharing or just more um, inclusive for all. And I just wanted to see if media does have as big of an effect as everyone thinks that it does, because there's been a lot of talk about how violent cartoons can create more aggressive and violent children. So I wanted to see if there was a way that we could flip the script and use positive cartoons to make kids be more kind and caring and helpful to one another. I used to do theater at the Ridgedale Community Theater. Um, I did that from sixth grade to eighth grade. And I just love acting and singing and dancing. And it's always been really interesting to me. And so then when I got to Troy High, I started doing the musicals here. I did Adam's Family as a freshman, Beauty and the Beast last year. And right now I'm actually practicing for Mary Poppins and I'm gonna be ensemble for that this year. Last year, I was just doing some random Googling at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I was looking for ways that I could further my education over the summer. I really wanted to do some kind of university thing. I stumbled upon the NYU pre-college program, which is basically a program where you go to NYU for six weeks. You can take a number of classes. I ended up taking two classes. I took an applied psychology class and then also a writing class. And um, you basically just live in college life. You get to stay at the dorm, you get to hang out with your friends in the heart of Manhattan and New York City. And it was so much fun and it was literally the best experience I've ever had for any of my summers. And I actually was fortunate enough to win the Darling Forest Writing Award from that, from my writing class for my final paper. So I was really happy about that. I am the vice president of the uh, Oakland County chapter of Jack and Jill um, Incorporated America. And Jack and Jill is basically a mother's organization for African American teens to kind of get together and talk about the issues that press us and talk about what we find important in our lives and just learn basically a lot of um, volunteer opportunities that I've gotten have come out of that. I'm really trying to live without limits. That's especially why I've been looking into going to college in Australia because I really would love to go overseas and all the different opportunities that you could get in other countries. And I want to make sure that I'm not restricted um, with my uh, education choice. And even though it is kind of a risk to go to Australia, I feel like um, it would be really beneficial for me and it would definitely move forward with Dr. King's message about how you can do whatever you want, no matter your skin color or anything like that. And I'm really trying to take advantage of that opportunity. My name is Bryce Tucker, and every day I do my best to walk in the path that Dr. King paved for me and every other kid out there that's just like me. A path paved out of hope, kindness, and unity. These three things hold no numeric value, but when put to use by all of us, they are strong enough to hold this very world together. And I believe that's all Dr. King wanted, a world of togetherness and harmony, a world where I am no different than you are. Slowly but surely, we are turning his dreams into a reality. And I believe that with enough hope and dedication, we will one day all be able to say that we, will, we are living in Dr. King's dream. I'd like to thank my family, uh, Dr. Dixon and Ms. Birmingham, and the rest of Troy School District for allowing me to be the change that I'd like to see in the world. My name is Bryce Tucker, and I am walking in Dr. King's dream. My goal, really, is to make everyone better around me because I feel like if we want to uh, make this world a better place, we need to uplift each other rather than bringing everybody down. We need to share our knowledge because the more we know as a, as a community, the more we can uh, accomplish in today's society. I'm actually the president of the Youth Board of the Union, and our main goal is um, share our ideas and uh, wisdom and knowledge that we have with uh, kids uh, that are 
not necessarily as privileged as we are. I went to Washington, D.C. to promote uh, abstinence uh, and advocate for funding uh, in front of a, um, delegates and representatives. And it was really, it was a really interesting experience because you could tell that a lot of the representatives and, uh, were not necessarily fond of what we were talking about, but it was really more so uh, just presenting the idea and hopefully um, because the door was closed and we just really wanted to knock and show them that our presence was there and we wanted them to realize that this is truly an issue. I really want to go into public defending. My mom uh, is a lawyer and it's really it's great seeing what she does and how she can help people and how people depend on her. I guess I really like that because it's in a sense it, it is a leader. Like I, I like to be that one that's counted on and depended on and the one that you can always trust. I like being the one that people look up to. I really want to uh, be able to make this world a better place by helping others uh, around me and making sure that their lives are just as great as mine, no matter their upbringing, no matter their issues or whatnot, because I feel like everybody deserves the same opportunities. I had neighboring Latino friends that, you know, I spoke Spanish with and uh, they would always give me like little, you know, tips and tricks on how to uh, improve my Spanish. I would always hear about, you know, the lack of legal representation, how uh, it was just because there weren't enough people that spoke Spanish there weren't, uh, and there weren't enough affordable lawyers that could help them. And I really, I guess that kind of, I took that to heart because I started taking more and more Spanish classes and I uh, saw myself improving and becoming more passionate about speaking Spanish. But I feel like it was more so in attempts to help them. Like that's my main goal. Dr. King's message was really, no matter who you are, don't treat anybody like uh, they are beneath you. I feel like no matter where you come from, we could all learn from each other in a way and we could all take things from people that you would have never thought you could. I feel like we should all just treat each other as, we, as human. We are all human and I feel like we could all help each other because everybody needs help with something. Just because someone doesn't look the same as you, that doesn't mean you can't help them. I feel like everybody deserves to be helped and I feel like we can all make each other better in our own way. I feel like that was really Dr. King's message to me or as how I took it in my humble opinion. I believe that he wanted everybody to uplift each other because the way we are, on, the way we are going to pro progress in society is if we come together and realize that we can only do this if we work together. And I feel like everybody has their own strengths and if we utilize everybody's strengths to their best ability, there's, there's nothing that we won't be able to accomplish as a human race. The, uh, these young men and women are great examples of what is right about our community, our school district. And I wanna thank them all for taking a risk today to stand before us all and share their stories and their walk with Dr. King. They make us very proud every day. And, uh, and they are the reason, you're all the reason why we must continue Dr. King's fight. <clears throat> Dr. King said, if I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. Today is your chance to do small things that will have a great impact. In just a few minutes, we will go into the two gymnasiums here at Athens to participate in four service projects. Today, you might write a note or draw a picture that will raise the spirits of a soldier stationed overseas. You might also uh, help assemble a care package for a service member or tie a blanket for a child in the hospital, a patient undergoing chemotherapy, or veterans recovering from surgery. You will have the <clears throat> chance to create yarn from plastic bags that will eventually be woven into sleeping mats for the homeless. Your blood donation might literally save a life. When you enter the main gym, you will see tables set up with each of the service projects. Please sit down wherever you would like to and follow the directions of the table leaders. If you don't see a spot in the main gym, please walk directly through to the auxiliary gym where additional tables are stocked with the same projects. Please be aware that some of the steps in the plastic yarn creation does involve scissors. The blood drive is set up in the upper west deck up the stairs to your left just before the auxiliary gym. 
If you have an appointment, please head up at your scheduled time. But to everyone else, they have plenty of spots for walk-ins as well. There's a team of volunteers here to help everything run smoothly as we, will have several, as we have several visual aids in place, especially for our plastic yarn, which is, a brand new, which is brand new this year. Take a look around you at the students in lavender shirts. These are members of our superintendent's student advisory board, made up of students from all four of our high schools. They work very hard to help plan and execute this day, and they are your guides for, this, for the morning ahead. They will show you exactly what needs to be done at each station. If you have questions or need help, please ask someone in a lavender shirt. One last thing. We want to sincerely thank our sponsors who made this day possible, especially our major sponsor, HAP, who also brought an army of almost 100 volunteers here today. You may also see a team of employees from Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union, my credit union, who are here in mass as well. In addition, we want to thank our other supporting sponsors, Alliance Mobile Health, Troy Foundation for Educational Excellence, John Kennedy Mimic Insurance, Will Daniels Mimic Insurance, GLP Investment Services, Troy Area Interfaith Group, Big Beaver United Methodist Church, and finally, LXR Biotech. We also want to thank the Troy Community Coalition, the Troy Education Association, the Troy Educational Secretaries Association for their generous support, as well as countless TSD families and community members, some of whom you are, see, you, are see, you are seeing scrolling on the screen behind us. This support is critical to our success here today, and if you choose, you will have the chance to help as well. You will see students walking around with large orange buckets. They are taking donations that will help pay the postage to mail care packages to our troops. We will also have the donation link on our school district websites open for the next week. If you wish, you can help in that way as well. A quick note, it will be crowded when you enter the main gym. We ask for your patience throughout the day. Last year's event went very smoothly, but with any large crowd, there's bound to be a little chaos as we first enter the gym. In the words of Dr. King, everyone can be great because anybody can serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. Thank you for opening your hearts uh, for this important day. And now, please follow the team in the lavender shirts to the gyms and begin our service projects. Again, thank you for being here.